Systems thinking is a skill that helps us to find high leverage solutions to important problems. High leverage solutions fundamentally improve performance using minimum effort and resources while avoiding negative unintended consequences. To understand what's required to find high leverage, let's observe this system. I'm going to generate an input to the system and ask you a question. What's the cause of this behavior? If you are like most people, you will say gravity or removing the hand. Let's look at another system. Watch as I administer the same input. Well, my feet aren't wet, so gravity and removing my hand are necessary but insufficient to cause the behavior. What's the cause of this behavior? The cause of the behavior is the structure. This is an oscillation looking for a place to happen. And it happens when I remove my hand. A fundamental concept of systems thinking is that it requires focusing on the structure of the system in order to find leverage. Why? Assume you don't like the oscillations. Also, assume that your mental model, your theory of how it works, is that the cause of the oscillations is gravity. How much leverage do you have to change the behavior? If your mental model is that the cause is gravity, you cannot influence the behavior at all. Trying to change gravity is what can be called fighting the physics. It's impossible. You can sense when you're doing so because it seems like the harder you push, the harder the system pushes back. How often do you feel as if your organization or community is engaging in efforts that are akin to fighting the physics? Now, assume your mental model is that the cause of the behavior is removing your hand. How much leverage now do you have to change the behavior? What if it's not your hand? I would still have no leverage. If I'm trying to solve how the U.S. economy impacts my business or the need for Medicaid in my state, and I believe the economy tanked because of poor economic practices in China, well, I have no leverage. If you believe that you have no ability to influence the issue, you will be led to at the very least stop trying, becoming a band of Eeyores. And at the worst, you will just blame others. You'll develop a serious case of victimitis. Now, assume your mental model is that the cause of the behavior is the structure of the system. How much leverage now do you have to change the behavior? By focusing on the system, you can make modifications to the system such that, even when the external shock happens, the resulting behavior is what you'd prefer. You've created a more resilient system. So, in summary, you can improve performance only if your mental model attributes the cause of the behavior to the structure of the system. You must assume performance is generated by the rewards and assets, policies and procedures, incentives, attributes, and decision rules. You have a shared picture of the system responsible for the behavior. It's the slinky itself, its structure, and in this case, you can see it. Now consider being on the executive team for a private sector company. Last quarter's profits were in the red, losing several millions of dollars. How do you feel? Awful, right? And what would you want to do? Probably cut costs by laying off people, cutting training, selling off part of the business. And you're probably thinking about looking for a new job. Now, picture that profits were positive exactly six months ago and have dramatically plummeted over the past half a year. Now how do you feel? even worse, and you'd likely propose even more drastic cost-cutting measures. And personally, you'd be nervously covering your butt, also known as CYA, looking for a scapegoat, and probably signing up for social networking services, like LinkedIn, to secure a landing place. Look further back in time, and here's what you see. Now how do you feel? Relieved, right? Why? Because you are probably picturing you are in a seasonal business. Perhaps you sell skis in New Hampshire. What can you do now? Well, you might add another season's products. You become golf and ski warehouse, a real place. Or you might figure out how to invest in R&D during the downturns, so that like many entrepreneurial ventures, you ride the wave to greater profitability every upturn. Using different time horizons to look at the behavior, you have shifted from short-term reactions, cost-cutting, to a more optimistic, strategic, search-for-high-leverage approach. This occurred precisely because seeing the long-term trend caused you to form a mental picture of the business. In the Slinky example, you could actually see, even touch, the structure responsible for behavior. But most of the situations we wish to improve, our businesses and communities, have invisible structure. There are policies and reward systems, skills and knowledge, emotions like motivation, and issues of racism and community trauma. All of these interact together to create a structure that generate the behaviors we see. What systems thinking offers is a set of principles and practices that help us develop a shared picture. 
a visual mental model of the system we wish to change. We see it in our minds, and when we can see it, we have the potential to find leverage. As you learn to apply systems thinking, you and your colleagues will become increasingly better at developing this shared picture. There are numerous practices, processes to implement, and products to create that will help you build this picture. I hope you will take the time to learn them. The rest of these training modules provide you with systems thinking principles and practices to work with others so that you will more clearly see and understand the systems you wish to change. In doing so, you can illuminate where the leverage is for making them perform better. And if we all can do this, we are on the road to creating the world we desire.